Jesus in each and everything. Life is wonderful now. Since this bless is given to my heart, joy and speak above is every part. And I want to live for my Lord. Life is wonderful now. All is happiness, God is my distress, peace and victory. My Savior came, I can be the same. Life is wonderful now. Life is wonderful, yes, it's wonderful. Life is wonderful now to me. I let Jesus in each and everything. Life is wonderful now. Since this mess is given to my heart. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Kindly be seated. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, and great is his faithfulness. Today is the day of thanksgiving to God the Almighty for his tender love and faithfulness, for his guiding presence and accompaniment, and for the wonders he has done. His care and affection never cease for the one whom he loves. God nourishes, supports, and carries us as an eagle carries the young ones, soaring high to the spiritual heights and satisfies our inner yearnings. Every celebration of Jubilee is a time of thanksgiving. It's a time to pause and count the many blessings God has showered on us. This day, we have gathered around the holy and awesome presence of God to raise our hearts and voices in humble thanksgiving for the persons of our dear sisters, Sister Nancy Augustine, our superior, who celebrates golden years of her faithfulness to God, Sister Kanti Aind, who celebrates her silver years of commitment to the Lord, and the silver jubilee of our home, Ferrando Convent, Bandel. Ferrando Convent is established in the year 1995, and great are the blessings of the Lord we have experienced through various persons in the past and present. We especially remember Father Louis Gobati, who was instrumental of our being here. Dear Sister Nancy Augustine and Sister Kanti and the Lord has walked along with you to reach this golden and silver years, upholding and strengthening you at every moment of your life. Yes, the Lord's illumining presence was with you as a pillar of fire in moments of confusion, struggles, fears, and temptations. The Lord's mighty hands enabled you to travel through light and darkness, and we are the most privileged to witness God's fidelity tangibly in you. Your S in a variety of roles, which you fulfilled responsibly with perseverance and enthusiasm. With thankful hearts, we acknowledge your tireless services rendered in different places for the people through the various responsibilities that you shouldered. 
we gratefully acknowledge and deeply appreciate your valuable contribution and sincere dedication and commitment to the congregation, province, and particularly for the smooth running of our community. We remember with gratitude the many hands that extended you God's support and the many hands that made you experience his providential love and generosity. We thank God for your parents who generously offered you to serve the Lord. We too remember gratefully your formators, benefactors, and well-wishers who made your life beautiful and meaningful in the long years of your religious life. We specially surrender to the merciful Father the departed souls of your dear ones and pray that he may reward them with eternal bliss in heaven. Dear sisters, as we are about to begin the most holy sacrifice, let us implore God's blessings upon our dear sisters so that he may reward and bless them with bounteous graces and continue to set their hearts on fire to live joyfully, giving glory to him. May he give them strength to fulfill the given mission ahead. May they enjoy God's love and his ever abiding presence throughout their life's journey. Let's also surrender our home and pray for the success of our mission that we may carry out the will of God with the help of our blessed mother. With these sincere prayers in our hearts, let us partake in this thanksgiving sacrifice. Kindly rise. Dear Sister Provincial Superiors, Sister Nancy and Sister Kanti, my fellow priests, and all you brothers and sisters, today is an important event here, a unique event, once in lifetime experience. Because we are, we are having not only the jubilee celebration of sisters, but also of this institution. It's a great blessing for all of you. And today I would ask you to pray for all those sisters who worked in this, society, in this community, serving this community in different ways. And in a very special way, let us remember Mother Pakumala, who died as a member of this community. Let us pray that God may grant her eternal rest. As we are here around these two sisters, let us remember that we are all sinners in need of God's blessing God's forgiveness. And as we read in Psalm 24, who shall climb the mountain of the Lord, who shall stand in his holy place, the man with clean hands and pure heart, who has not done anything useless, worthless things. Let us ask the Lord to give us a clean hand and pure hearts so that we can worthily offer this sacrifice of praise. And so let us confess. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O Lord, faithful God, grant we pray that we may give you thanks for your kindness towards your sisters, Sister Nancy and Sister Kanti, who today are eager to renew the gift received from you, strengthen them, give them a spirit of perfect charity, so that each day they may more fervently serve your glory and the work of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Yet whatever gains I had, this I have come to regard as loose because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loose because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly goal of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown the strength of his arm he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear sisters, I just said in the beginning, this is a very happy occasion for all of us as we celebrate this jubilee. The word jubilee in English comes from Hebrew, yobel, which means trumpet or ram's horn. Trumpet was sounded and all the Hebrew slaves were set free. So today as we celebrate this jubilee, let us pray for liberation, for deliverance from all that is negative, all that is evil. Especially let us pray for Sister Jubilee here, Nancy and Kanti. And let us pray for this institution to remove all the negative energy from here and let all of us be filled with his graces. And it is a time for total detachment and complete attachment to Jesus the Lord. In the year 1895, 28th September, a child was born in Italy, Genoa, and they named him Stefano Ferranto. No one knew then one day that he will be called venerable a saint. No one ever thought that he would leave his own country and come to India and one day become the bishop. And no one imagined that one day he would plant a tree in the Northeast India on October 24th, 1942, which would spread its branches all over the country. And one day, this branch will reach also to this Ganges, beyond Ganges, along the Hubli to Bandal. And here we are celebrating the 25th year of arrival. Bishop Ferranjo erected a living monument in the honor, honor of Mary Help of Christians. And all of you are privileged to be the missionary sisters of Mary 
help of Christians. But as we remember this great event of your arrival here in Vandal and your existence last 24 years, it is good that we just glance through the past history, the humble beginning of your society. It was against the overwhelming odds and difficult circumstances that the congregation came into existence. The outbreak of the World War II brought untold suffering to people everywhere, and Northeast India, being a border area, was subject to even greater hardships. The immediate consequences of the war, like the displacement of people, the influx of refugees, especially from Burma, the uncared or little cared for victims of war, poverty, misery, made the life of the people in this region very pathetic. The massive ignorance and squalid hygienic conditions of the rural women folk co called for genuine care and concern in the hundreds and thousands of villages of Assam. There were no many women and children who had to be, in, there were so many to be instructed. Bishop Ferranto could not withstand the sad plight of the people of this region who were deprived of spiritual as well as material assistance. He could not think of leaving them to be doomed forever so his <clears throat> idea cross arose that a congregation of sisters who would visit villages and enter homes and huts and take care of the sick, gather children and stay in the village, not for a few hours, but if need be for weeks uh, continuously. And this is your spirit. Let us go back to the roots. <clears throat> Once, a blind man asked Swami Vivekananda a simple question. He asked, can there be anything worse than losing your sight? And this was the answer of Swami. Yes, losing your vision. I repeat again, worse than losing the sight. Yes, losing your vision. And this is my prayer to Almighty God and to you all <clears throat> that you remain faithful to this vision. Do not lose sight of your founder. There is a story told, little life-saving station. There was a very rocky seashore and very often shipwrecks used to take place and many would die. So what happened? Someone thought of doing something for them. Just a hut was set up, one boat was there, few people who named manned the station, they were trained and they were devoted to duty, constant watch over the sea, and they saved many people. Then what happened? <clears throat> As the days went by, their fame grew, desire of people also grew to be associated with this small group. There were many admirers and many volunteers, many gave generous donations. Some said, this hut is not enough. They removed that hut and they built a very pakka, solid building and furnished it with nice furniture and carpets. <clears throat> As the days went by, this hut, which is now turned into a nice building, became popular gathering place lot of engagement in different activities, enjoyment. So they engaged in socializing and there was very little interest shown in saving the people. 
when some people actually rescued from the sea were brought into this house what happened it was such a nuisance because they were dirty they were wet and to bring them into the building carpets were spoiled their furniture became dirty so this was a problem soon the social activities of the club became so numerous and the life saving activities so few that there was a showdown at the club meeting with one mem some members insisting that they return to their original purpose and activity there was a vote taken and those trouble makers those who wanted to go back to original spirit were sent out and what did they do they set up at the beginning a hut they began to do the same thing and began to save lot of people they became famous same problem again this hut again turned into a place of social gathering and it is said if someone goes to this region you will find lot of small huts turned into clubs originally supposed to be for saving the lives of those who met with shipwreck <clears throat> what happened to them they started well but they lost their focus they lost their aim in life let this not happen to us this is my prayer for you dear sisters and as we now today surrounding our thoughts and our presence and our feelings and affection around these two sisters here yes, sitting in front superior and her bodyguard sis <laughs> kanti let us thank the lord for this 25 and 50 years ago the promise we are not today uh, remembering just that incident that took place 25 or 50 years ago of your profession it is a continuous growth a celebration of journey of life with christ from that moment till this moment that's the beauty of this jubilee <clears throat> and during this journey you have saved many lives <clears throat> excuse me you have touched many people and that is the joy you can bring to the altar today and the jubilee is a time to thank god as he came in i liked what is written here by the grace of god i am what i am by the grace of god and in this journey everything is a grace of god remember dear sisters it does not matter to go to god whether you were you deserve it or not god's grace flows into your lives abundantly from that moment till today <clears throat> in timothy 2 chapter 2 13 we read we may be unfaithful but god is always faithful and he has been accompanying you all these days of your journey so this time of jubilee is a time to thank the lord the perseverance in your religious calling for 25 and 50 years not your individual achievement to be celebrated but it's also god's grace for which we need to be filled with great gratefulness towards him who called you the centrality of any jubilee celebration is not only individuals achievement but rather a grateful celebration of god's gracious call and his constant accompaniment in your life why i do say this if you read the psalm 127 what does that show 
if the lord does not build the house in vain does the builders labor if the lord does not watch over the city in vain does the, the watchman keep vigil in vain is your early rising and you are going later to rest the lord is with you and the lord should be with you and the jubilee is a celebration of love it is absolutely certain that by taking your religious vows jesus christ is your first love and that is why you are here today to celebrate but us we <clears throat> then today we have to we need we have to ask ourselves is christ the only love in whom we remain <clears throat> and whom we with all our heart soul mind love is this first love fading because of our obsessions with self ego persons positions and even things we also need to ask ourselves today as we celebrate this jubilee if we love our fellow brothers and sisters especially in this community as well as those outside especially the poor the needy and those on the peripheries as much as we love ourselves this is our life our mission and this is how we are meant to be so dear sisters jubilee is celebration of your love for jesus and for your brothers and sisters and jubilee is also a time to renew our commitment i am just quoting from pope francis what he said on 23rd world day of consecrated life consecrated life is says summons all of us to counter mediocrity to counter the devaluation of our spiritual life to counter the temptation to reduce god's importance in our lives to counter an accommodation to a comfortable and worldly life it is not about survival it is about a new life it is living encounter with the lord in his people it is a call to the faithful obedience of daily life and to the unexpected surprise from the spirit it is a vision of what we need to embrace in order to experience the joy and this joy is jesus for all of us and for francis is challenging us for francis challenges us not to cling to our security we are told to abandon our culture of comfort and go to the periphery we must be less of an enclosure for the virtuous but more an oasis for weary and drowned trodden we must be less of an experience of exclusion and more of an encounter of radical love inclusiveness and solidarity <coughs> i conclude with the motto of your beloved founder he was loved by by so many that she long is a witness all the people loved him so much <coughs> because he was a saintly person and what was his motto apostolus christi to be another christ apostle of christ 
And what does it mean to be apostle of Christ? To give Christ to the world. And how can we cry, give Christ to the world? That is the question. We can find an answer in the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. We can give Christ to the world if we try to give. Where there is injury, let us give pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And it is in lo loving and dying for others in your congregation that one day you will be born to, to eternal life. May Mother Mary, may your patrons, may your founder from heaven continue to bless you and keep you focused on your vocation and on your mission. Let your response be.
that guided by the divine spirit, he may carry out a great responsibility of leading the Holy Church according to the plan of God. Let us pray to the with God's grace, they may continue to instill God's love in the hearts of the people. Let us pray to the
Almighty and ever living God, we place all these prayers and petitions before you. As you have allowed us and helped us to begin this celebration so well in your name, help us to bring it to a happy conclusion in your name. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. 
for our good and the good of all his holy church. <coughs> Receive it, our oblation, of Lord, the offering of Sister Nancy and Candy, which our sisters desire to refrain today, reaffirm today, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, graciously confirm them more fully. To the image of your beloved Son, grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent us a Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as you endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, let us pray to the Lord, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, lead us, us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Dear Reverend Father Pryor, Father Francis, Father Rector, Father Antony, all the dear fathers, brothers, dear sister provincial, Sister Sini Matthew, Sister Jacinda Jerva, our wise provincial, sisters from provincial community, and all our friends. On this eventful day of our life, together with the Immaculate Virgin Mary, our Heavenly Mother, we, Sister Kanti Ayand and me, count and recount the enormous blessings of the Almighty God in our life with humble and grateful hearts. With a profound gratitude to God, we want to tell of the wonders the Lord has done in our lives through various persons and events in the past 25 and 50 years of our religious life. With St. Paul, each of us can say, by the grace of God, I am what I am. 1 Corinthians 15.10 It's all by the grace of God we are here today. We thank God for his unfailing faithfulness, myriads of blessings, and steadfast love in our lives in the past years. May his name be blessed forever. It is indeed a befitting occasion to extend our sincere gratitude to Father Pryor, Father T.L. Francis for solemnizing today's Eucharistic celebration. We inspire your inspiring and practical homily, inviting us to be renewed in our missionary commitment. Thank you for reminding us of our founder and the founding days that we may not lose our vision. We owe you much, dear Father, for you have redoubled our joy through your esteemed presence and prayers. 
The gracious presence of all the concelebrants on this special day is laudable and praiseworthy. Thank you, dear fathers, for being a part of our celebration with your presence and prayerful support. We are immensely blessed to have you with us. On this occasion, we would like to express our grateful thanks to all the fathers here from Shrine and Don Bosco for the many sacrifices you make daily for our spiritual growth with the daily mass, homilies, recollection talk every month, confessions, and occasional retreats. We experienced your readiness in helping us in all our needs. May the Lord reward you in a way that he alone can for all your generosity. We thank our brothers for their presence and support of praise. With the profound gratitude, we remember late Father Louis Cobetti, STB, who is instrumental for our existence here in Bandel. We remain ever grateful to him for his great help and generosity in actualizing the foundation of Ferranda Convent here in Bandel. May God bless and reward him abundantly in his eternal home for all his goodness to us. We are greatly indebted, indebted to our pioneer sisters of Ferranda Convent, Bandel, sisters Pushpa Surin and Rose Kriyam for their hard work and sacrifices. We remember with gratitude all the superiors and sisters of the past 25 years for their dedicated services and sacrifices for the growth of this center. We gratefully remember all our benefactors, both spiritual and material, for their support and encouragement in the past. We extend our grateful thanks to our Superior General, Sister Philomena Matthew, for her keen interest and support in our life. We remember with admiration our former Superior General, Mother Mary Rose Tapa, late Mother Elizabeth Pakumala, and Mother Mary Tadavanal for their guidance and direction in our lives. We remember all our general counselors of past and present for their timely help and encouragement. With much love and joy, we extend our sincere gratitude to our dear Sister Provincial, Sister Sini Matthew, for her presence with us today. It is you who took initiative to have the Jubilee celebration in spite of the challenging situations in and around the world. Dear Sister Sini, your very presence is a source of great support and encouragement for us. We thank all our former provincials and their team for their contributions to our growth. We thank Sister Jacinda Jerwa our Vice Provincial, Sister Annie Sebastian, our Provincial Economer, and Sisters from Provincial Community for sparing your time with us today. We place on record the rich contributions made by our formators. We gratefully remember them for molding and shaping us. We cannot but pass this occasion without mentioning Father Noel Kenny STB, our spiritual director, who for almost three decades guided our congregation. Our words are insufficient to thank him for his invaluable spiritual help to the congregation in general 
and in particular to each one of us. We extend our enormous gratitude to God for our parents and dear ones for inculcating in us true values and imparting Christian formation. We humbly acknowledge their moral assistance in making our dreams a reality through their unceasing prayers and constant encouragement. Our heartfelt thanks to Sister Maria Chaco, our community economer, all our dear sisters of our community for the months long meticulous planning of the various programs connected with the Jubilee. We appreciate your love, prayers, generosity, sacrifices, and hard work. Dear sisters, our sincere, sincere thanks to each of you for the love with which you did all that is expected of you and even more. You shared generously your time and talents. May the Lord be generous with each of you. A very special note of thanks to Sister Rashmi and our junior sisters for the artistic touch you have given to this hall. Thank you for preparing this place so meaningfully, thus giving it a prayerful look. We thank sisters Aruna Pagadala, Maria Chako, Marina Basumatari, and the aspirants for beautifully arranging the altar, altar and sound and light system with the help of others. A special word of thanks to our children here for their arithmetic and prayerful steps, putting all of us in a prayerful and festal mood right from the beginning of the Eucharistic celebration. Thanks to Sister Marina Basumatari for being their guide. Sing to him, sing praises to him and proclaim all his wonderful deeds. Psalm 105.2 Today's liturgy is made very meaningful and prayerful by the melodious singing of our dear aspirants under the able guidance of sisters Lisnora Jana and Sumalada Korapati, the directresses of aspirants. Dear aspirants, you gave us a taste of the celestial joy with your beautiful singing. A big thank you to each of you. We thank Mr. Sar Mr. Sanjoy Kalko and team for taking care of the sound system and, and the live streaming the day's event, thus making it available for our family members. We thank the sisters and domestic staff working behind the curtain along with the catering department. Once again, we thank each and every one of you for being with us, strengthen us through your prayers and presence. May God bless you all abundantly. Thank you. Let us pray. We have partaken, O Lord, of the body and blood of your Son, which you have given to us on the joyful jubilee. Grant, we pray, that your sisters, Nancy and Kanti, refreshed with heavenly food and drink, 
may proceed happily on the journey towards you. Grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The celebration is over. Let us go in the peace and joy of Christ. Thanks be to God. Now we shall have the photo session. First the fathers and the jubilarians. Please come. Followed by Reverend Sister Provincial, the team. And after the photo session, the fathers will unvest and join for the felicitation.
Now we have the message from Sister Sini Matthew, our provincial superior. Sister, please come. A very good evening to one and all present here. Today we witness triple celebrations, Silver Jubilee of Randa Convent Mandel, Golden and Silver Jubilee of the religious profession of our dear sisters Nancy Agustin and Kandi Aind. A silver year has a special significance in the life of any institution as it signifies the amount of success, growth, and a sense of maturity it has attained in all the preceding years. Ferranda Bandel thus celebrates a milestone of its vision and mission on 18th November 2020, today. A convent here at Bandel was a dream, and it was turned into a reality by the generosity of Reverend Father Louis Gabet, the SDB, the Salation Fathers of Kolkata, and the collaborative work of the sisters who have rendered their selfless services to this prestigious institution. We thank God together for his magnificent blessings upon this establishment and pray for God's continuous support on our mission here. Dear Sister Nancy and Sister Kandi, it is a great privilege for me to be here with you and to celebrate this milestone, the golden and silver jubilee of a religious profession. You are like the watchman who is faithful and watchful to guard the estate of his honor. You have been faithful to your vows of chastity, obedience and poverty which you promised to your God on your first profession day 50 and 25 years ago. And we thank all those who have brought you to this day, your parents, your family and friends and other mentors who may have influenced your coming. Dear friends, we are here to honor Sister Nancy and Sister Kandi as the complete 50 and 25 years of religious life. Sister Nancy has served the congregation in the capacities of the Assistant General, General Council of Formation, Provincial Superior of Mary Immaculate Province, Kolkata, Superior, Teacher, etc. in the past years. She is a kind-hearted woman with full of virtues and wisdom. Sister Nancy is the pioneer here at Ferrando and we owe her much for spearheading the mission here and she is fortunate enough to celebrate her golden jubilee at a place which she has initiated. Her unassuming personality and humility inspires each one of us. Her formative skills have helped to shape the lives of many and have molded them into wonderful MS MHCs. What is common in both Sister Nancy and Sister Kandi is their soft-spoken nature. They have few words and more actions. They focus on the being rather than doing. Sister Kandi is a great missionary who by her closeness towards God draws souls to him. She is a woman of faith and courage who has her own convictions, values and principles who always stands for justice and truth. She believes in doing what is right no matter whether it is noticed by others. We remember these wonderful qualities of our sisters today 
as we celebrate their jubilee. But there is much more to it than that. I mean, more than all the highlights. We are here to celebrate what God has done for them and through them for the church. Mother Mary sang the great hymn of praise, the Magnificat. Mary cries out to God, my soul glorifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. She goes on, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. It is in that spirit that we have come here today. Like Mary, our dear sisters know that everything that they are have come to them as a free gift from God. It was God who inspired them to offer themselves for the religious life with the missionary sisters of Mary, help of Christians. It was God who began the good work in them and it is God who has brought them to this day. What we are celebrating is the faithfulness of God. Hearty congratulations, dear sisters. We are living at a time when many people find the whole idea of commitment difficult. People can be wonderfully generous when the occasion demands it, but they are fearful of making a total commitment. The religious life, like the priesthood and the marriage, involves a radical choice to commit oneself for life to what is truly a vocation, a calling from God. Humanly speaking, it can seem an impossibly difficult choice to make. How can I know how I will feel in 10 years from now? How can I commit myself to this person for the rest of our lives? But today, Christ invi invites each one of us, dear friends, to do just that. The history of the church is a story of countless men and women who have made a great act of faith in God and have set out on the path of total commitment. The fact that religious life and the priesthood and marriage are true vocations does not mean that life becomes easy or straightforward. It is easy to start out with romantic ideals and imagine the kind of life it will be. But you know, as well as I do, that there are always ups and downs. Whether you are a prior, rector, priest, provincial, superior, principal, a sister, or even the pop, there is still the inevitable tedium of the daily routine. Sometimes people imagine that marriage will be a romantic dream with the, the most wonderful husband or wife, but as the wedding service reminds us, you take each other for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health. It is the same with the religious life. One of the great virtues we all need is the virtue of perseverance, you and I. But I hope that you also know how God is always faithful to his promises. Looking back over 24 years as a sister, I can say that God is never outdone in generosity and that he gives so much more than we could have ever imagined. I am sure that our dear sister Nancy and sister Kandi would say the same. Today, we give thanks. With them, we pray for ourselves too, that we may be faithful to our vocation. If we are generous enough to make that commitment, God will never let us down. And we will experience in a wonderful way the faithfulness of God, which we are celebrating with our dear sisters today. Let me quote St. Francis of Assisi. Therefore, hold back nothing of yourself for yourself, so that he who gives himself totally to you may receive you totally. It is addressed to you and me. Now, here are the words of Pope Francis to women religious at the outset of the year of consecrated life. I am counting on you to wake up the world. Since the distinctive sign of consecrated life is prophecy, this is the priority that is needed right now, to be prophets who witness to how Jesus lived on this earth 
a religious must never abandon prophecy. And how are religious to be prophetic? Pope Francis says, with the eloquence of your lives, lives which radiate the joy and beauty of living the gospel and following Christ to the full, by learning from Jesus the meaning and practice of love, you will be able to love because you have his own heart. Dear Sister Nancy Augustine and Sister Kandi Aind, may you continue to love God much. May you also know the love our provident God has for you. May you persist in loving one another and all others. May you also lean on the love of God. And above all, never forget the energy of love that is present here in this place as your brothers, sisters, associates and friends gather with you to celebrate your 50 and 25 years of loving God and loving others. And I let Pope Francis has the last word. Go, continue to wake up the world. Once again, hearty congratulations, dear sisters. Thank you. We 